The festive season is upon us, and while you might be able to dodge that annoying cousin or aunt of yours this year due to the ongoing situation, there is one thing that comes with the festive season that aviators cannot dodge. Fog. And still, people want to get home for Christmas, so planes have to land somehow, even in foggy conditions. How do they do it? Find out with me today, as we take a look on low visibility procedures. Subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Welcome to Airspace Explained. Fog is the nemesis of on-time operation. Seriously, the only thing worse for punctuality than fog is maybe snow. Or snow combined with fog. Or any flight to some Italian island airport. Anyways, let's take a look at how planes land in fog. Usually, and contrary to what many people believe, all landings are performed by pilots themselves, not the autopilot. However, the lowest permissible visibility for such an approach is 550 meters or a cloud ceiling of 200 feet. That's not much, and trust me, if you encounter such weather close to the minimum allowed values, it is very demanding to only see the runway in your last few seconds before touchdown. If the fog gets any denser than that though, the landing has to be performed by the autopilot. Let me explain how it works. For a low visibility landing, a so-called instrument landing system, or in short, ILS, is required. It consists of a localizer beam, providing horizontal guidance, and a glide slope beam, providing vertical guidance. The aircraft can then lock onto these beams, track and follow them, and fly down to the runway. When the plane's height measurement instrument, the radio altimeter, registers that the plane is only a few feet above the runway, it will automatically flare the aircraft, permitting for a more or less smooth but safe touchdown. The plane's autopilot will then continue to follow the localizer signal on ground and maintain the runway centerline, all while the automatic brake system slow the aircraft down to taxi speed. It's a truly amazing and somewhat scary procedure to witness firsthand as the plane does its job, while us pilots are monitoring the progress. And monitor we must very closely. For the procedure, not one but two autopilots are required, and both have to be in perfect agreement with all measurements and commands so that the approach can be completed. Also, we must monitor that the autopilots do the right thing at the right time. It is, for example, very unlikely but possible that the plane senses that it is near the ground while still high up in the air and it attempts to land there, reducing thrust and raising the nose. This would lead to a stall and most likely crash the aircraft. So you see, it makes sense to have us pilots up in the cockpit to avoid such silly computer mistakes. If you're interested in how it all looks, there's a video popping up in the top right corner showing you such an approach. I wish I could show it in this video, but it is copyrighted, so head over there if you want to watch it. But why do pilots still land on their own these days? Why not just use an automatic landing every time? Well, it's not that simple. For an automatic landing to take place, many conditions have to be met. The autopilots must work flawlessly and the ground installation must have backup systems. Also, not all airports have ILS installations. Some rely only on approaches based on GPS, which is not accurate enough yet for automatic landings. And one of the most restricting factors is airport capacity. If you ever flew during foggy weather, chances are high that your flight was delayed. This is due to the fact that planes have to fly at a larger separation in foggy approaches. You see, the radio signals transmitted by the ILS can be disturbed or blocked if anyone or anything, let's say 200 tons of aircraft metal, are in the way between the radio transmitter and you, the receiving aircraft. So therefore, a spacing of almost double the normal value is used between aircraft approaching the airport and this of course limits the number of planes that can land at any given time. This is avoided like the plague if at all possible. Flights to larger airports that normally run at almost full capacity, like London Heathrow, can suffer heavy delays in the order up to many hours if there is fog that does not clear up during the course of the day. So there you have it, now you know how planes land in low visibility. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you liked the video. See you in the next one.